Your turn. Guys.
Oh, the kids are gonna sing. Uh -huh. okay. ready. Can you mute the uh, microphone? Put the ball. Oh. 
Sorry about that late start. We're struggling with some technical issues here. Is that one on? Howdy, Bull. Can everyone hear me? Yes. One second. Yep. Can you hear me there? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. How are you, Jim? Good. Welcome, everyone. I see Prima Tarangani, Pratibha Tripati, Tom Connolly. How are you, Tom? Ananda Vrindavan Devi. And who's who else is here? We have uh, my mother-in-law, Ram Tulsi. And uh, helps me if you have your names up. All right, welcome, friends. We've got a bunch of folks here. Um, sorry, we were struggling with some technical issues. Hey, how are you? How are you yeah. I'm not even sure. Okay. Um, I hope you can see we've got, hello, hello everyone. How are you, Connie? Good, good to see you. Good to see you too. All right, so I'm gonna mute everybody. Okay, um, if there's any issues, please go ahead and text me in the, in the group there. Ah, sorry about that. It was, very, it was very stressful. We were trying to listen to a lecture leading up to this by His Holiness Radhanath Swami, who is probably still live. So it's very awkward for me to be doing a, a talk um, overlapping with Radhanath Swami's talk. So anyway, this is how the digital world works here. Welcome all of you. Thank you so much for being here for this opportunity to tell the second half of the story of Narasimhadev at just the right time, twilight. So everyone okay? You all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Okay. So let's start by let's start by um, Singing the, uh, I'll move this for now while I'm not singing. Let's start by singing the prayers to our spiritual masters. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Vidam Yena Tasmai Shri Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Shtapitam Yena Swayam Rupa Kalamahi Mahati Swatanam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Tapadakam Shri Guru Vaishnavancha Shri Rupa Sagar Jata Sahagana Gunatam vitam tam sajeva sadvitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitam deva shri radha krishna pada sahagana lalita shri vishakam 
Hare Krishna Karuna Sindhu Lila Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Mupika Nandhu Radha Kanda Janushruti Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Sarvi Vishabhanyu Sadeve Nanayani Pancha Kalpa Tarudhascha Kripa Sindhu Jahevacha Patitana Pavati Vaishnavevya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adrita Shiva Sadhguru Bhaktivinoda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama 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 So I'm going to have to lean in a couple of times here. I think that's the main camera that you guys are seeing. And I'm going to have to lean in a couple of times to share some screens with you. Um, let's start with this prayer. This is the traditional prayer to Lord Narasimha sunk many times each day in uh, the temples all over the world. Now, uh, we can explain this uh, in a moment, but for now... Let's, we'll sing this together. We'll uh, do it like that. Okay. You still sing the mix of the two cameras? You start singing, please. Not Yeah, to yeah, to yeah, 
Okay, could you guys hear the kirtan okay? Was anything too loud, Navki Shore? Any troubles? Okay. All right. So nice to see all of you. So, uh, here, kirtan, you want to read this for everybody? Translation there? Which one? You can read all three. I offer my obeisances to the Lord Narasimha, who gives joy to Prahlad Maharaj, and whose nails, whose nails are like... Oh, we gotta. I will hide this for you. Whose nails are like chisels on the stone-like chest of the demon Hiranyakashi Poo. Lord Narasimha is here and also there. Wherever I go, Lord, Narasim Lord Narasimha is there. He is in the heart and is outside as well. I surrender to Lord Narasimha, the origin of all things and the, and the supreme refuge. Prayer to Lord Narasimha by Jayadeva Goswami. Okay. So we have here some, uh, let's see, let me try and shift this video. Okay, if you guys can see, I'm gonna try and, we have some interesting deities of Lord Narasimha here. We have, um, let's see, we're blocking the light there. So we have, this fighting Narasimha, can you guys see him there? And we have, we have uh, the seated Narasimha. And this is a little deity of Narasimha. The square looking one is a deity of Narasimha that uh, I've worshipped ever since I was a kid. My mom actually used to worship him when I was a baby. And then there's this big Narasimha Dave. We're blocking the light as we do this, but can you guys see how beautiful they are? So, and then we also have Narasimha Dev here on our altar. We have two Narasimha Dev. So this is a seated Narasimha, and then this is a dancing Narasimha. We have a lot of Narasimha Devs in this house. So, um, 
Last time, we brought the story up to after Hiranyakashipu was getting frustrated that Prahlad was not learning what he was supposed to learn in school. Now, there's an interesting thing here. Um, I'm going to switch to another. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. So this is the Srimad Bhagavatam, and um, this is the section about Prahlad and, and uh, Hiranyakashipu. Now, where we told the story last time was Hiranyakashipu, our story's hero, had begun, started to become an anti-hero. Now, what's the difference between a hero and an anti-hero, Kirtan? Uh, a hero and not a hero? Yes, yeah, so an anti-hero is like, kind of like the, yeah, it's like the antagonist, but it's in a story where it's like he's against, so he, at the beginning of the story, the way we told the story last time is Hiranyakashipu was the hero of the story, and now what's happened is, as his son Prahlad has shown himself to be a devotee of his enemy, Vishnu, who killed his brother, right, Hiranyakashipu is thinking, all I'm trying to do is what's good for the world and good for everyone and put myself at the center so I can take care of, protect everyone the way that I see the world should be shaped, the way I see the world should be uh, uh, built. And now my son, of all people, my son has become a follower of my enemy. He thought that his son had become a cult member of the, of the, uh, the cult of Vishnu. And... Uh, Hiranyakashipu was so angry that first uh, he tried to have him taught at the school, uh, but no matter what he did, he even says at some point that a dog's tail, a dog's tail is curving and no matter what you do, you can't straighten it out. That's how he describes Prahlad. So, let's see. So this is kind of intense here, what happens now. Our hero turns into an anti-hero. He has so much hate for Vishnu that he says to his son, basically, why are you acting like this? Uh, don't you know that I'm the master of all that I survey? Don't you know that the whole universe bows to me, Prahlad? And Prahlad says, uh, Prahlad says to his father, because of uncontrolled senses, people too addicted to materialistic life make progress towards hellish conditions and repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed. Their inclinations toward Krishna are never aroused, either by instructions of others or by their own efforts or a combination of both. So not only is his son not respecting his wishes, but now his son is preaching to him about the cult of Vishnu in his own home. The, the, let's remember, our hero's brother was killed by Vishnu, and Vishnu just appeared and disappeared. He couldn't even, he wouldn't even fight fairly. Hiranyakashipu, he wouldn't even let Hiranyakashipu come and get revenge. He just disappears, comes in the form of a giant boar, and then kills his brother and disappears. So he, Hiranyakashipu has so much feeling of revenge towards Vishnu and Krishna. Then Prahlad continues, persons who are strongly entrapped by the consciousness of enjoying the material life and who have therefore accepted as their leader a guru or similar blind man attached to external sense objects cannot understand that the goal of life is to return home back to Godhead. This is now his son starting to preach to him all about this cult of Vishnu, his enemy. We should engage in the loving service of Lord Vishnu. As blind men guide other blind to miss the right path and fall into a ditch, materially attached men led by another materially attached man are bound by the ropes of fruit of labor which are made of very strong cores and they continue again and again in materialistic life, suffering the miseries. And then he says, 
They should smear on their bodies the dust of the feet of the devotees of Vishnu. So Prahlad is completely bold and not at all frightened. So Hiranyakashipu at this point, he thinks either his son has become a, 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 a zombie cult member, or he thinks his son has become mentally ill, or he thinks um, that his son has some disease, but he, he can't make sense of what's going on right now. After Prahlad Maharaj has spoken this way and became silent, Hiranyakashipu, who, the, remember, the whole universe is bowing to him. All the demigods, every creature he's ever come across is now bowing to him. He is so blinded by anger that his own son is trying to preach to him to serve his sworn enemy. He's blinded by anger, throws him off his lap. Now, what was he doing seconds ago? He was holding him, kissing him, and, and loving him throws him off his lap onto the ground. Indignant and angry, his reddish eyes like molten copper, Hiranyakashipu said to his servants, O oh, demons, take this boy away from me. He deserves to be killed. Kill him as soon as possible. This boy, Prahlad, is the killer of my brother, for he has given up his family to engage in the devotional service of the enemy, Lord Vishnu, like a menial servant. Although Prahlad is only five years old, even at this young age, he has given up his affection relationship with his father and his mother. Therefore, he is certainly untrustworthy. Indeed, it is not at all believable that he will be, behave well even towards Vishnu. So Hiranyakashipu is now trying to convince himself that his son spins this huge web about why they should kill him. So then what happens, he's, he's losing his, his luster. He's getting completely frustrated and upset. They tried, they tried, they tried to teach Prahlad, but uh, nothing, nothing would work. Prahlad wouldn't learn. Prahlad had already been taught by Narada, as we know, when he was living in the ashram of Narada. Mm, so we're going to the next chapter here. So we spoke about this yesterday. Prahlad starts getting all the children to, uh, to, to, uh, to chant and do kirtan. Now, it's interesting because Prahlad, as a devotee of Vishnu, Prahlad understood that Prahlad understood that the qualities that attract Vishnu to the devotees, Krishna to the devotees, are the qualities of, of patience and tolerance and humility. When his father tried to teach him, he patiently tried to be at the school. When his father tried to kill him, he patiently suffered through all the things. What are some of the things that Hiranyakashipu tried to do when he wanted to kill Prahlad? He threw him off a cliff. What happened when he threw him off a cliff? And uh, what happened as he fell? He was caught by Krishna. What, what's another thing that happened to him? He was put in a pit of snakes. He was put in a pit of snakes. Well, tell me more about this pit of snakes. Um, it has uh, snakes in it. They were uh, poisonous. They were all poisonous. And did you know that that's where Hiranyakashipu would throw all of the most, um, all of the people he wanted to torture in his kingdom? He would put them in there and you watch them scream in agony. Did you know that? So what happened when he threw Prahlad in there? Uh, Prahlad said to Ura and his brothers. And what happened? He turned around to Krishna. And then what did the snakes do? Um, they said, played with him. That's right. They just saw him as one of their own. What else did he do? Kairava was making donuts today for Lord Narasimha Dave. Were they fried donuts or baked donuts? Baked. <laughs> baked. So... If you were making donuts using the frying method, what happened? What was one of the things that happened to Prahlad? He tried to boil in oil. He tried to throw Prahlad in boiling oil. And what happened? Prahlad was chanting Krishna and it protected him. So 
Prahlad tolerated this and many, many more things. He tried to, Hiranyakashipu tried to throw him under the feet of, a, of an angry bull elephant. But Prahlad exuded so much peace in his heart that the elephant uh, embraced him and lifted him up on his head to protect him, just like he would his own child. Hmm. So, someone could ask the question, you guys. Um, how is it that Prahlad tolerated so many different things and still had faith in Krishna? Like, in other words, why didn't Krishna just come when Haranyakashipu said, kill him, and then why didn't Krishna just come to rescue Prahlad at that moment? Prahlad was being incredibly patient because he had faith in the Lord's plan. So the, the uh, situation that we're all in with the coronavirus right now, you know, someone could say, uh, you have faith in God, you say you're, you're uh, religious people, why don't you all, uh, why doesn't, uh, if you believe in God, why doesn't Krishna just come and heal the whole world from the coronavirus? Same question for Prahlad. Why, uh, why uh, didn't Krishna just stop all of the difficulties? And uh, a devotee like Prahlad only knows that he has full faith in the Lord's plan. I was listening to Srila Prabhupada lecture earlier today, and Srila Prabhupada said that uh, for someone who is uh, against God, all the energies, all the energies of the world seem like uh, they are just pushing towards the ultimate conclusion of death, and there is fear and anxiety all around. Uh, just like the example that he gave is uh, a cat and a mouse. So uh, for those who are uh, uh, materialistic in this life, this life is just like a giant grinding machine, and it's grinding generation after generation of people into dust. And we try and avoid it. We try and look away from it. We can try like Hiranyakashipu did. Everyone remembers from yesterday's story. What did Hiranyakashipu do? He tried to cheat death. How did he try? How did he try to cheat death? Kirtan, remind us. What did he do to try and cheat death, Hiranyakashipu? He um, performed austerities. That's right. What did he? And what did he ask for at the end of his austerities? Um, he asked for immortality, but um, he can't have that. In the material world, everyone dies, right? Yeah. So then what did he do to cheat death? Um, he asked not to be killed in the day or night, um, not by man or beast, not by anything living or dead, not in the air or on the ground, um, uh, not inside or outside. So he thought, he pretty much had convinced himself that he had cheated death, right? That he had found immortality, right, Kairava? Mm -hmm. So for someone like Hiranyakashipu, he has so much power, but ultimately he was filled with fear, right? What was, what was he afraid of? He was afraid of dying. So uh, so for, for Srila Prabhupada said in this lecture I was listening to today, that for a mouse, the jaws of the cat are like what? <laughs> Certain death, that's right. Um, but for a baby cat, but for a baby cat, what is the mouth of a cat? Uh, death? No. Not for a baby cat. <laughs> oh, um, the mouth of its mom? That's right. For a baby cat, the mouth of the, of the for a kitten, Prova, kept, it was funny on the thing, Prova kept calling it, Prabhupada said, what is the word? Kitty? Kitty? No one said kitten, and Prabhupada said, kitty? Kitten? So for a kitten, the mouth of the mom is the most safe place in the world, right? 
So, just like that, for Prahlad, he had faith that whatever circumstance Krishna was putting in it was just the mouth of the cat. Does that make sense? So for a, for a devotee looking at the coronavirus situation, we look at it differently than someone else. Krishna wants us to be in this situation. Why? We don't know. Just like Prahlad, we don't know. Prahlad didn't know. Why? I don't know why the Lord is allowing me to be thrown in a pot of boiling oil, but I have full faith that he will do what is right for everyone involved and he will protect me. And that faith, the strength of that faith protected Prahlad and, and was his constant uh, connection with, with um, Narasimhadev. So for us in this situation, how can we look at the coronavirus situation with the same consciousness? If we have the same consciousness as Prahlad, how will we see the situation that we're in? Krishna is doing it. And and what is our what is our role to, to play in this whole thing? Pray to him. Pray to him to continue to try and serve and be devotees. And have faith that something greater is coming from all this, right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. So um So it's just passing twilight now. So what happens to uh, what happens to um, what happens to Prahlad? He goes in front of his father, and his father gives him one more chance, and he says, "Prahlad, I'm giving you one more chance. Bow down to me, respect me, show me the respect that I deserve." And Prahlad, what does he say? The power that you have, Father, where does it come from? What does he say? Vishnu. He says, all power comes from the same place. And Hiranyakai Shibu says, you, you're just a five-year-old boy. How is it that I can't kill you? And Prahlad says what? Um, um, I think you have Krishna. He says, my power and your power come from the same place. Neither of us have any power. The call comes from Krishna. And Hiranyakai Shibu says what, Kairo? Where is his Vishnu? What he just said. What else does he say? Then Prahlad says he's everywhere. All right, Prahlad says what? He's everywhere. What do you mean he's everywhere? He's everywhere. <laughs> what do you mean he's in everything? He's everywhere. Yeah. Is he is he in this couch? Yeah. Is he in the sky? Yes. And then what does he say? Is he in this pillar? So where where are they now in the middle of this this scene of our of our movie hero versus anti hero? Twilight. Twilight, but where 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 are they? So they're like in a in the Hiranyakashipu's throne room, which is famous for having what massive pillars, right? Yeah. So what does he say to him? Is he in this pillar? And Prahlad says. Yes. <laughs> and then Hiranyakashipu says, "Then I will kill him." And he takes his fist and in complete anger he smashes the pillar. And what happens? Tell us what happens. Tell the story. So that's the cue there. <laughs> what happens? There's a rumbling sound. And a roar. And a roar. It's like described, it's like a shrill screeching. Hiranya Kajibu doesn't know where it's coming from. He gets so loud, it's filling all corners. The pillar is shaking, and the whole room is shaking, and he hears like the screeching, screaming sound, and it's like, it's like, uh, it, it's so scary. All the hairs on his body stand on and everyone's shaking, and then the pillar cracks open, and who's inside the pillar? The Shingadev. The Shingadev. And what does he look like? Half man, half lion. Why is he half man, half lion? He's not a man or a beast. He's so he's... So he's somehow or other, he's fitting himself in this gap left by the, the penance of Hiranyakashipu. So then what happens? What else, what else is about Lord Narasimhadev? He appears at twilight. Kairava said that. So twilight is what? Not day. It's not the day and it's not the night. Hiranyakashipu didn't think about twilight, did he? What else? Um, inside or outside? Right. Oh, so, he, Lord he put, so what happens? He takes 
They start fighting. They start fighting. They have the most horrible fight. And then... Um, you know, you know one, at one point, Lord Nishingadev... Okay, let's, t- let's describe Lord Nishingadev. He has the head of a lion, and it's described that his mane looks like the sun. And his, his fur and his skin is the color of, of white moonshine. And Lord Nishingadev's eyes are so filled with anger. They're like pools of red anger. And he, he's got the body of a man and the head of a lion. And at one point, he grabs Hiranyakashipu. And Hiranyakashipu managed to struggle out. And when Hiranyakashipu struggles out, he thinks, just see, I'm more powerful than him. I'm going to kill him. This is just a sign. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill this Vishnu. He killed my brother and he corrupted my child. Doesn't sound like a hero anymore. He sounds like he's losing his mind. So then what happens? Um, Lord Nishingadev just grabs him with like one hand. And he drags him. Where does he take him? Onto his lap. Well, first he takes him outside. So he's out in, in the in the portico of the, 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 the courtyard entranceway of the palace, which is what? Not inside or out. Not inside or outside. And inside. then he puts him on his lap, which isn't in the air or on the ground. Or in the sea. Oh, yeah. And then um, he takes his nails and starts ripping. Show his... us. <laughs> he does like this and starts ripping his stomach apart. <laughs> That's right. And his nails are not living or dead. Because the weapons of the nails are not living or dead. They, they continue to grow after a body has died. Nails continue to grow. So even though Lord Narasimhadev, who is the Lord of Brahma himself, Brahma, who's Brahma? Brahma gave here in Nikashipu all of these blessings right mm-hmm. so even though her, brahma himself prays to narasingadev as a form of lord krishna lord vishnu lord narasingadev didn't have to do this but just to honor the promise of his devotee lord brahma he came in a way that wiggled around all the rules of brahma and still was able to grab hiranyakashipu for his abuse of this little innocent boy devotee Prahlad. So then what did he do? He, he gave him the first documented case of a gastrointestinal surgery, is what we've been taught. And he ripped open his belly and he took his intestines. He was so angry and he put the intestines like garlands on his shoulders. Then Hiranyakashipu's armies, and they saw their master die and they all attacked Lord Nishingadev. And Lord Nishingadev had an unlimited number of arms, and he just was like oceans of destruction. He was so angry. This is that form of the Lord, full of anger for protection of the devotees. Hmm. So uh, then all the demigods, all the great... Creatures from all over the universe come to offer their respect to Narasimha, but they're all too afraid to approach. And they say to Lakshmi Devi, they say, Lakshmi, you are the wife of Vishnu. You please go and pacify your husband. And what does she say? He's too scary. He's too scary. And she says, I've never seen my husband this angry. It was like how upset I was when we were trying to get our cameras ready for this, <laughs> for this uh, Zoom call. She said, I can't handle it. He's too upset. I've never seen him like this. And uh, she said, so, and then they said, Narda and Brahma, they said, Prahlad, you please go. And Prahlad, was he afraid? No. Nope. Remember what we said about the mouth of the cat? Prahlad had always been in that consciousness. Even when his father, what did his father, we, sometimes we think, oh my God, Lord Nishringadev was such an overreaction. But no, what did Hiranyakashipu try to do as the last thing to his son before he tried to kill him with his own hands? What did he do? No, he poisoned him. He invited him to lunch and he put so much poison in the food that it could have killed a hundred people. But what did Prahlad do to that food? Right, Prahlad, Prahlad said, I can't accept this. I have to first offer it to my Lord. So for us, we offer our food, whatever we get, whatever vegetarian foodstuffs we have. Krishna says in Gita, leaf, fruit, flour, water, grains, beans, vegetables, milk, these kinds of substances that are that are uh, 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 offerable, we, we, we take them, but we don't just eat them, we offer them before we eat them, right? And now for us, we're doing it because uh, otherwise 
all the killing and death that's involved in actions in this life. It's full of karma. And that karma just binds us deeper and deeper. But for Pilate, he had that same consciousness. He didn't know it was full of poison, but the Lord accepted even that poison food. The Lord accepted that poison food as an offering of love because Pilate offered it with love. Right? So uh, Pilate went to Narasimha and he offered him a garland of flowers and Lord Narasimha Dev was so sweetened and pacified by Pralad. He, uh, he asked Pralad, my dear boy, anything that you would like, any boon, please tell me and I'll give it to you. And Pralad said, I, I don't want anything. I don't need anything. Uh, I, I, everything that I could possibly need, you've given me. And then Lord Narasimha Dev said, I want you to ask for something. And then Pralad said, what did he say? He said, "I." He said, "These are the three things I the 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 uh, two things that I remember Prahlad praying for. I want to always be with you, no matter what it takes. And as long as these uh, people are still here in the material world, let me keep coming back again and again and again, so that I can teach everyone about you and help uplift others." That was the first thing he asked for. The second thing he said is, "Please forgive my father for all the things that he did because he didn't realize what he was doing." He didn't realize, he, he thought I was his enemy, but he didn't understand that actually he's, he and me and all of us, we're all just loving servants of the Lord, so please forgive him. Lord Narasimhadev blessed him, and he blessed Prahlad that 10 generations after him and 10 generations before him would all be blessed and liberated by Prahlad's beautiful uh, devotion. So... So at this time of difficulty, sometimes people say, we should pray to Narasimha to protect us. And I want to tell a funny story. So you see this deity, this little deity of Narasimha, this one here. I'm sorry, I'm blocking the light. This deity of Narasimha came from a festival that I attended. And he was given to me by a man who sold sculptures. Which way? How are we doing? Oh, okay. Which one? So, this deity here of, of nursing it. Here, I'll, I'll pin this video. My wife is just saying maybe you guys didn't see that. Yeah, do you see this this deity of nursing it here? I hope everyone can see that. He's very handsome, very cool. He's got his weapons out. So, um... So he was given to me at this festival and a man who was selling these sculptures from India, he knew that I liked all these stories. And he said to me, please tell me the story of Narasimha. When people come to buy these sculptures, I need to have a good story to tell them. And I need to help them understand why they should buy these sculptures. So I told him the story of Narasimha and I told him that the ultimate lesson of the story of Narasimha is to be like Prahlad and be free from attachment and only attached to bhakti under any circumstances, even if the Lord puts us in difficulty, to always have faith in the Lord. And he said, you take this sculpture. And he handed him to me. And I said, what, what do you mean? He said, he said I'm not going to ask you for any money. You just take him. You take him. Take him home. He's yours. And I said, why? And he said, the story you told me, I'm not going to be able to sell them to anybody. No one's ever going to want to buy that. Pure love of God with nothing in return, forget it. Here, you can have the deity and take him home. Swear to, swear to Krishna, that was a true story. So I, I said, okay. And I took him home and I gave him to Kirtan. He sits in Kirtan's bedroom. So that is not the relationship that we want to have with these divine personalities. That's not the approach that we want to take. So uh, Narasimha is an incredibly scary form, but actually Narasimha is manifested in that way, really just to pr protect Prahlad Maharaj and show that you cannot limit the Supreme Lord, that there's no way to, uh, to, to cheat uh, the material situation. The only way to get out of the material situation is to actually uh, work with whatever gifts God has given us. To, to utilize the situation. If we're a householder and we have a family, to try our best to use 
uh, our relationships and use our home and use our careers and use our money to serve God. If we're a monk, use that. If we're rich, if we're poor, if we're young, if we're old, whatever situation that that God gives us, we use that. Not like Hiranyakashipu, where you're trying to cheat your way into success or happiness, uh, willing to break any rule to do what's required. That's not the mood of a devotee. That's not the way we approach the divine. The mood, our mood is, uh, Lord Narasinga, you're so wonderful and you came to protect Prahlad. Please, you protect our spiritual lives. Help us to be faithful like Prahlad in any circumstance. So um, I want to show, I want to show this other incredible deity of Narasinga. This deity was made by a lady named Jagat Karna, who is one of the famous uh, painters uh, in, in Prabhupada's books. She did some really famous paintings. And this is a very funny story that came with this. You see this huge deity? You see the evil king Hiranyakashipu is there, like wrapped up in the lap there of, of, uh, of Narasinga. So he's pretty scary. So my, my mom at one point had heard that Jagat Karna had done some sculpting and had said to her, oh, I'm looking for a sculpture to put in the entranceway to my house to protect my home. And I heard you have a Narasinga that you've been working on. I'd like to purchase him from you. So Jagat Karna said, okay, I'll, as soon as I finish him, I'll, I'll, um, I'll send you some pictures. When my mom saw this deity of Narasinga, he's very scary. And some people, when they see Narasinga for the first time, they're like, he is far too scary. What are you doing with that personality? So my mom saw him and she thought, I don't know what my neighbors are going to think if I have him in the entranceway to my house. This is such a fierce form of Krishna. Like, I can't explain the story to everyone. It's like, took, you know, it take, takes me two sessions to tell the story, right? So how is she going to, so, so she said, I don't think I can, I don't think I can take him. He's too fierce. I'm afraid of putting him in the entrance to my house. So now Jagat Karna has this giant Narasingadev on her kitchen counter that she was going to send to my mom. So uh, one day I got a phone call from Jagat Karna. This is years and years ago. And she said, Gauravani, um, I, she told me the story and she said, I am flying through Washington. And I have heard the voice of Narasingadev, and he says, take me to Washington and give me to Gauravani. So I said, you've got to be kidding me. And so she said, I'm not kidding you. I'm on my way. I'm going to make a stop in Washington. If it's okay, I'll meet you at the airport and I'll hand you Narasingadev and he can be living with you. And that's what he wants to do. And I was like, that sounds incredibly mystical to me. I would love to have him. I'm so grateful. I, I didn't know what he looked like. She came to Washington, she came to the Dulles airport and she came out of the airport literally long enough to hand me the box with Lord Narasingadev. And she said, okay, nice to see you, thanks so much. She turned around and went back into the airport and continued with her journey. So ever since then, this Narasingadev has been living uh, as part of our life here and protecting us, protecting our home. Hmm. So uh, anyone have any questions? Uh, we're going we're gonna to sing a little bit more. I would like to sing the Narasinga Kavacha, which is a prayer for protection to Narasingadev. And then after that, we will, um, we will uh, do a few more songs for Narasinga. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, if you want to type it or speak it, uh, we can take one or two questions right now, if that's okay. All so many intelligent people out there. I'm sure someone's got some curious uh, question. Yes, please. I've got a question, Gora. Since I've known you, you've always had a, an affection for Lord Nishingadev. And I wanted to ask you, you know, this story has a lot of philosophy uh, imbibed in it. And sometimes I think you talked about how we refer to Nishingadev, you know, in our present circumstances. And I, and I remember you hearing uh, telling me a story about, I think during the, you remember the movie Hotel Mumbai? Uh, the, the Mumbai terrorist attack, and you were telling me a story about how one of the devotees in Chaupati. Right. How, right. He was I, just, I just met him again. He, I meet him every year when I go to Mumbai. Yeah, he was a, a, on a police officer fighting the terrorists who attacked Mumbai. 
Yeah, and I was thinking like, what is this, too, right? yeah. what does this story mean to, to, to you? And, and, you know, I think since I've known you, you've always had a great affection. So how do you see something that, you know, in our tradition was talked about thousands of years ago, what is the meaning of Nishringa to you? Well, what you guys, you guys all like Lord Nishringa Dave, right? Whenever you think over here, Lord Nishingadev, you get happy and excited. What is it that you guys like about Lord Nishingadev? Ravati, is there something that that you find endearing or charming about Lord Nishingadev? Mm. Or Kairava? Mm. I guess it's like what you said, that he has two like opposite sides to him. So for devotees, he, it's very like intimate and he's Sweet. like our personal like bodyguard protector. He's like cute and and <laughs> and cuddly for the devotees. And then to everyone else he's delicious. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What about you, Kirtan? I like how he's scary. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny how you know people always say, doesn't that scare the kids? But the funny thing is the kids like how scary he is. There's something about Lord Narsingade that the kids find really cool. Anything else? Um, also, like how mean he is. <laughs> He's pretty scary. Kairva, you have any thoughts? Um, like he is scary to the right people, <laughs> but like, yeah, I'll go out because he's scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, Krishna is incredibly vast and mysterious. Um, and we cannot contain God. You know? And I think Narasinga for me reminds me that no matter what I imagine, I could never have imagined Lord Narasinga Dev. And it reminds me that God is beyond my wildest imagination in every way. That's one of the things I like about him. I also like how um, I like how uh, yeah, mysterious, mysterious the story is. Um, there's some fascinating things about the story to me, like why didn't he save Prahlad before all of these bad things happened? That's a great mystery, actually, if you think about it from a like a literal practical standpoint. Why didn't God just come in and fix things before they went bad? Why did he wait and Prahlad had to go through all these trials and tribulations? And I really think it does connect with what's going on right now for us. And these lessons are the most practical life lessons that we obviously need right now. Here we are in a situation where the whole world is completely, I mean, you know, we used to say this like, like hyperbolically, like, oh, the whole world's crazy. Like, no, literally right now, the whole world is crazy. Like everything is inside out. Like the whole thing is nutso. And we're all having to try and find that spot of peace, the eye of the storm. I mean, all of us with our families, it, you know, uh, it, with our careers, like what's the future hold, our health situation, our loved ones, you know, national issues, Politics, everything has just been twisted inside out and turned upside down. And we're all forced to find some spot in the midst of it all where we can connect with God and connect with our true selves. And that's what the story of Prahlad shows, that there was nothing that could shake Prahlad. And, you know, in normal circumstance outside of the coronavirus, we might be thinking, well, you know, I mean, whatever, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm peaceful, I'm peaceful. But like, can we be peaceful like Prahlad when his own father is trying to poison him? You know, I was listening to a lecture from Radhanath Swami earlier today, and the answer is no. None of us could do that. It's not possible for any of us. But Prahlad was exceptional because Prahlad was a pure devotee. Prahlad shows us what's, what's a, a, to, to aspire for. You know, what's to aspire for. We can't copy him, but we can follow in his footsteps. So when the, when the Zoom thing's not working and the sound's going crazy and you've got all your friends, they're waiting for you online, 
can you have faith in the Lord? You know, and the answer for me today is no, I couldn't. And I was losing my absolutely <laughs> losing it. But this is the lesson from Prahlad. And this is, this is the, the beauty. And this is, Lord Nishinga is so iconic. I mean, come on, so iconic. You know, like what more iconic form is there of the Lord? You will never get this form out of your mind. Once you see Narasinga, half man, half lion, like what? That is so iconic, so wild. No. So anyway, I hope that answers your question. Let's sing a little bit. Thank you all so much for, for having us here. Um, you know, I want to ask if, uh, if Ananda is still there. Ananda, do you want to say anything before we go into some kirtan here? Just a, a wonderful thank you for what a wonderful evening and end of the day. Um, really appreciate how you, how you brought it all together. For me, I'm fully satisfied. Oh, you're so kind. Well, I really want to thank my kids. You know, the kids don't have to do this. And people ask me all the time, uh, how do you, how do your kids like Kirtan and how do they like doing this? And I really got to say, I, these kids are wonderful and they deserve a huge round of applause. So if everyone wants to take themselves off mute for a second, let's give these kids a round of applause here for being so awesome. Can't, I can't thank these guys enough. I can't think of enough. Yeah. It's Mirabai. I just wanted to say to you. Hey, Mirabai. So nice to see you. Jim and I remember you telling us the story of Narasimha when <laughs> we were in Hampi on our first trip to India. And I was thinking about you earlier today. And when this popped up, like out of nowhere, that you were doing this Zoom call tonight, I was just, yes. And I remember <laughs> you. I remember, yeah. I was just so excited. Uh... This. So nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Really grateful. Thank you all. Thank you all, uh, you know, friends and well-wishers for being here. And um, I'll just make, because we're going to end this program with music for singing for Lord Narasingha. I just want to make a couple of announcements. Um, please visit our new project, which is patreon.com slash Gauravani, where we're putting out all of our new material is going right there. So first, it's all going to the patrons that are supporting uh the Patreon project. So check that out. That's the way to support the music and 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 um, and uh, be part of all of this creative stuff that we're doing. Um, the second thing I just want to say is that we will be putting a recording of this up on YouTube so that if you want to share it with folks afterwards, we can do that. So we got part one up there and part two on my um, Gauravani official YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Ananda, for the opportunity. And um, Let's do this now. You guys think we can do the nursing a Kavacha? I'm going to share the screen with you. Should we do that? Why don't we do this? Why don't we chant? Why don't we do this first? Let's, let's turn this backwards. First, we're going to sing for a few more minutes, just like five or, five or 10 minutes. And then um, anyone who wants to stick around to do this mantra armor to Lord Narasinghe, we'll do it after five, five, 10 minutes like that. Okay. So that way folks need to leave, they can leave because we're already past nine o'clock. We said we'd be finished by nine. All right, does that sound okay? All right, let's start with, um, I'm gonna put everyone back on mute here. And we'll do some singing here. Jayan Singh Singh
Ramvira Mahavishnu Ramvira Mahavishnu Jwalantam Sarvato
to Narasingha for our spiritual elders. So that's an important thing that we, the mood of the devotees is not so much that we pray on our own behalf because for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons is that prayers on your own behalf are not that powerful. They're a little bit mixed up sometimes, but when you pray on behalf of others, it's incredibly powerful. So let's pray, especially for our spiritual elders, but for everyone, let's pray to Lord Narasingha Day for spiritual protection and empowerment for a couple more times. Jayong Nrsinghade, 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 together. Nrsinghade, Nrsinghade, Nrsinghade. Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Prabhupada. Thank you so much for being with us. Anyone who has to go now, we respect you and we love you and we respect your time. We do not take your time for granted. We love you all. Um, for those who want to stick around, we're going to do another super cool thing, which is called the Narasinga Kavacha, which is a mantra armor for Lord Narasinga Dev to protect you. Okay. So the website that I found it on is... Let's see, where did I find it? It is here. Okay. <laughs> you almost did that. All right, can you guys see that? Should I zoom in a little bit more? Is that visible? Okay, so it's kind of long because complete and total protection uh, using the Lord's name is not a joke. So it <laughs> takes a little while to do. Um, and uh, here, take the camera over and have my mom say Huddy Boulder. I don't know, whatever, if she wants. All right. Okay, you guys ready? Can I get a Huddy Bowl if, if you guys are ready? Okay. 
Do you guys want to try this? We're going to try this all together. You want to come sit over here, Kyrie? No, you can come back here. Or you can. All right. Come right here. Do you want to come on this side right here? Okay, so we're going through the different parts of the body and taking names of Narasimha that describe the different parts of his body. And we can, one, the traditional way to do is you touch your body, but for now we can just imagine ourselves and all these different parts of the body. We're inviting the Lord's energy to bless and purify us. This is a, an armor, a kavacha, based on the, uh, the names of Narasimha. Okay. Narasimha, you guys ready? Narasimha kavacham vakshe pralade no ditampura sarvaraksha karam. Punyam Sarvopadravanashanam Sarva Sampat Karam Chaiva Swarga Moksha Pradayakam Dyatva Nrsingham Devesham Hema Singhasanastitam Vivritasyam Trinayanam Sharad Indu Samaprabham Lakshmial Lingita Vamangam Vibhuti Bhirupashutam Chatur Bhujam Komalangam Swarna Kundala Shobitam Saroja Shobito Raskam Ratna Kayuda Mudritam Tapta Kanchana Sankasham Pita Nirmala Vasasam Indradi Suramal Rishtas Puran Manik Yadiptivi Virajita Pada Dwandam Shamka Chakra Dihetivi Guru Mata Chavinayat Stuyamanam Mudanvitam Swahrik Kamala Samvasam Kritla to Kavacham Patet Nrsingo Me Shirapatu Loka Raksharta Sambavaha Sarva Gopi Stambavasa Palam Me Rakshatu Dwanim Nrsingo Me Drishaupatu Soma Suryag Nilochanaha Smritam me patun ri harihi, muni varyas to tipuya, nasam me sing hanashas tu, mukam lakshmi mukapuya, sarva vidya di pa patun, rissing ho rasanam mama, vakram patvindu vadanam, sada pralada vandita, Nusinga patrume kantam skandhau bhubrid anantakrit divyastra shobita bhujo nusinga patrume bhujo karau me deva varado nusinga patrzarvata pridayam yogi shajascha nivasam patrume harihi madhyam patu hiram yaksha vaksha kukshi vidaranaha Nabhim me patu ni harihi swanabhi brahma samshuta brahmanda kotaya katyam yasya saupatu me katim guyam me patu guyanam mantra nam guyarupa drik uru manu bhava patu janu ni naradrupa drik jange patu dhara bhara harta yasam nukeshari Sura Raja Prada Patu Pada Mini Harishwaraha Sahasra Shirsha Purusha Patu Me Sarvashastanum Mahogra Purvata Patu Mahavira Grajognita Mahavishnu Dakshinetu Mahajwalas to Nairitaha Paschime Patu Sarvesho Dishime Sarvato Mukaha Nusinga patu vayavyam somyam bhushana vigraha Ishanyam patu bhadrome sarva mangaladayaka Samsara bhayata patu mrityur mrityur nakeshari Idam nusinga kavacham pralada mukamanditam Bhakti manya pate naityam sarva papai pramuchate Putravan, Hanavan, Loke, Dirgayo, Rapajayate, Yam Yam Kamayate, Kamam, Tam Tam, Rabno, Tasangshayam, 
सर्वत्र जयम सर्वत्र विजय भवत भूम्यंतरिक्ष दिव्यानाशिकागसंभुता विषापहारण पर ब्रह्म राक्षस यक्षा दुरोत्सारण कारण भुजे वल पात्रे वचितम शुभ करामूले जुटम येना सिद्ध्यु कर्म सिद्ध देवासुर मनुष्यु स्वं स्वं एव जयम भवत एक संयम त्रिसंयम वापत नियतो नर सर्वंगल मंगल्य भुक्त मुक्ति चिंदती द्वाति सती सहस्रा पतत्सुधात्म नृण कवच से मंत्र से मंत्र सिद्धि प्रजाते अनेन मंत्रजन कृवा भस्मंत्रण थीराकस्थु त्रह भय हर श्रीवर जापमस्थु दत्म वर्यामंत्र प्रसिद यो नर मंत्र नृसिहद्रमाचर I don't know this last one actually. This interesting. I don't know that. I know the others. I've never seen this version. Kimatra bahune te na nrsimha sadhusho bhavat manasa chintitam yatu satchnapno tyasangshayam. Okay. गर्जन्तम गर्जयन्तम निजभुज पतलम स्फोटयन्तम हतन्तम दिव्यंत रुप्यन्तम तापयन्तम दिवि भुवि दितिजम शेपयन्तम शिपन्तम क्रन्दन्तम रोषयन्तम दिशि दिशि सततम संहरन्तम भरन्तम वेक्षन्तम पूर्णयन्तम करणि करषते दिव्य सिंहं नमामि इति श्री ब्रह्मांड पुराणे प्रलादोक्तम श्री नरसिंह कवचम संपूर्णम सॉरी आई एडिट टू अर्ली हरि बो यू गाइस आर नाउ फुली प्रोटेक्टेड बाय द शक्ति ऑफ लॉर्ड नरसिंह Thank you so much, everybody. So nice to see you. You see Connie here, Mom. Connie's here, and Jim and Mirabai, and we have Navki Shore, and uh, Rose Ma. How are you, Rose Ma? It's so nice to see you here. Your picture, and Mrs. Stemple. <laughs> so nice to see you here. And the Putney and everybody and who else? Shrivani is here. Wonderful. Bharat, this is Bharat. Jyoti Sani, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. So nice to see you all. Thank you so much. All right, let's all take ourselves off mute and we'll chant. We'll chant. Uh, we'll do Hari Bols for Narasimha Dev. You want to do my mantra? Kirtan wants to do some Maha Mantra. Okay, we'll do three Hari Bowls for Lord Nursing Dave, and then we'll do some Maha Mantra Kirtan. You guys are allowed to go eat your dinner if you want. All right, so we're going to say, we're going to say, uh, we'll say, Nursing Dave, Bhagavan, and everyone say, Jai, okay? And we'll do it three times, okay? Blessing the Lord Nursing Dave. Nursing Dave, Bhagavan, okay? Jai! Nursing Dave, Bhagavan, okay? Jai! Nursing Dave, Bhagavan, okay? Yeah. All right. You want to leave some here, Tom? Come on. Here. Just whatever. Okay. Ravi, you want to sing? Okay. Thank you. You guys are welcome to stay. We love you, Honey Bowl. Can I show you guys some really random but very cool thing? Since it's only a few of us left, I want to show you guys something really cool. Hold on a second. Really, you're gonna 
We sprouted lotus seeds. These are lotus seeds from, from seeds. We made these lotuses. They're growing. Isn't that incredible?
Happy Narasinga Chaturdasi. Haribo. Thank you all so much. Haribo, everybody. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. So nice to see you. Our love to all of you guys. Haribo, 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 Haribo. Nice to see you. Thanks, Dora. Thank you all. All right.